I was gonna say January. It is not January. <sighs> Hello. Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my March wrap up for 2021. I read a total of nine books. I'm going to be splitting it up into two parts because we all know that I ramble a lot. So to make it a shorter video, two parts. This is part one where I'm going to talk about the first five books that I read for this month. So without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I'm going to talk about is Watch Over Me by Nina LaCour. I ended up giving this a three out of five stars. After aging out of the foster care system, newly graduated Mila finds herself on an isolated farm on the coast of Northern Carolina. She accepts a job working as the farm's school teacher. She absolutely adores her student Lee, but she never expected this farm full of ghosts to bring up so many triggering memories from her past, and it's the story of that. This was a very quick read, and I did fly through it, but I think that I had such high expectations of this book because everybody on booktube raves about how amazing it was. Unfortunately, it just felt very average for me. I found it very slow and I just didn't really care about what was happening at all. I didn't feel like I was connecting with any of the characters and I'm not sure if that's because I haven't really experienced any big grief in my life, which is a major point in this story. So I found it very hard to relate to what Mila was going through. So that kind of brought me out of the story a bit, but I will say that I really enjoyed the chapters from Mila's past. I think that I was very invested in trying to figure out what she had done and why she felt so terrible and I think that because it was more of a like mystery vibe to it that's what made me give it a three out of five because honestly if it didn't have that mystery of trying to figure out what had happened I probably would have been extremely bored and given it like a two so I also think that the big reveal about what Mila had done was very underwhelming but I do understand why she felt bad about what had happened I did like the overarching theme of grief and healing and trauma but like I said I just found this book to be very average so three out of five stars. The next book that I read was A Taste for Love by Jennifer Yen. I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of five stars. It follows a girl named Liza Yang who is deemed perfect by her classmates but her mother thinks otherwise. When compared to her older sister, Liza is very argumentative and opinionated and she is always pushing back on what her mother's traditional views are, especially when it comes to her mother's views on dating a nice Asian boy. The one thing that Liza and her mother bond over is baking. Liza agrees to help her mother in judging their family's annual baking competition, so she is very surprised when she shows up on the first day of the competition and every single contestant is a young Asian American boy who his mother has selected as possible suitors for her and it's like the story of that. This was an enemies to lovers story which I had no idea that it was a retelling of Pride and Prejudice but now that I know this fact I can definitely see the similarities. I did really like Liza. I think that she was a lot of fun to get to know. I do wish that there was more of a focus on the actual baking competition. It didn't really come into the story until more than halfway through so that was kind of disappointing to me. I just wish that there was more of a focus on the baking, like I said, rather than the drama in all the multiple relationships in the book. I will say that I did enjoy the exploration of the mother-daughter relationship in this and I will also say that I was definitely more invested in the friendship relationships as well as the sibling-sister relationships rather than the romance. The plot was definitely predictable but I still had a lot of fun reading it and I thought that it was a pretty cute story so overall 3.5 out of 5 stars. I enjoyed this one. The next book that I read is a children's book that I had to read for my ethical practice class. If you don't know, I'm currently in school and I am taking early childhood education. We had a whole lesson about anti-bias education. We had to pick a story to read to the class that we thought really encapsulated anti-bias education. So I chose A Family is a Family is a Family by Sarah O'Leary and I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. Honestly, I 
freaking loved it. It follows a young child who is asked by their teacher what makes their family special and they're a little bit nervous to answer because their family looks a little bit different than the typical family but as they listen to their classmates answers to the question they realize that their family is just like everybody else's family and it was just such a precious story. I think that so many children will be able to see themselves in this book like it wasn't your typical one mom, one dad, maybe a sibling thrown in there. There were family dynamics of all kinds in it. There were children who had parents on the LGBTQ spectrum. There was a child who had a mom in a wheelchair, so disability was represented. There was an interracial couple who had children of both parents' skin tones. There was one child that lived with a grandparent. There was a child who had divorced or separated parents that they split weeks with. There was an adoptive family, a foster family. There were just so many different dynamics that, like I said, I think will really help children feel represented, which is super important in a classroom. Look at me spitting out what I've learned in class. But yeah, it was just a really sweet book, so I gave it five out of five stars, and I definitely recommend you read it to a kid in your life because it's very, very cute. Then the last book that I will talk about in this part one of my March wrap-up is Perfect by Cecilia Ahern. I gave this a three out of five stars. It is the second book in the Flawed duology. This book picks up right where Flawed left off. I will admit that I read Flawed back in like 2018 or something like that, so it had been a while, so I was a little bit confused going into it. I remembered the basic premise of Flawed, but it was very difficult to figure out who is who again, but I went back and read my Goodreads review. I did pick up pretty quickly on everything that happened, so it's not like that really affected my reading, but I just was a little disappointed in this. I found it a little bit boring, and it wasn't as exciting as Flawed, which I think I gave four out of five stars, so this was definitely a downhill from that. I just didn't have that tense feeling that I remember from the first book. I also was not a fan of the love triangle in this. I just wish that it hadn't been there at all. The connection between Celeste and Carrick, one of the love interests, I just think should have been left as platonic, although I do understand why it got a romantic twist on it because they had been through a lot, but I just think it would have been better if it had been a platonic relationship. I think that the best part and the thing that I liked most about this book was the familial relationships. I think that Celeste had very supportive parents and it was really nice to see in a YA novel, especially a dystopian, because usually I find that parents just are like, run along, if you die you die, but Celeste's parents were very invested in her well-being, which was nice. I do also think that the ending wrapped up a little bit too nicely for my liking, but overall it was a good conclusion to the duology, but just a tad underwhelming in my opinion. So three out of five stars. All right, everybody. So that was my wrap up part one for March, 2021. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.